Good morning. Let's stand together this morning as we worship the Lord. Let's declare He is good. His mercy endures forever. His faithfulness goes on through generations. Let's sing. Lord, you are good and your mercy endures forever. You are good and your mercy endures forever. People from every nation and tongue, from generation to generation, we worship you. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship you for who you are. Good and your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. People from every nation and tongue, from generation to generation, we worship you. Good and your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Sing that again. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. From every nation and tongue, from generation to generation, we worship you. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship you for who you are. We worship you. Man, praise the Lord. You may be seated. I tell you what, that'll, that'll fire you up this morning. God is good regardless of what we face this week, and he's good all the time, isn't he? 
Amen. Hey, thank you for being here today. I'm so good to see each and every one of your smiling faces today. And thank you for watching online. If you're watching online, let us know that you're here. You're here with us today. And let me say thank you for supporting the church with your prayers and with your faithfulness in giving to God's kingdom. You can give in the offering plates there by the door and then the drop box, but also ColemanFirst.com. And just hang on. We're about to launch our new website. You can still go to the old one right now, but just very soon, we're, we're just almost there, about pushing the ball over the goal line. And I think you're really going to love the easy access of our new website and our new app and be able to give there and keep track of what's going on, the events of our church and people. Uh, it's an exciting time in the life of our church. Hey, let me tell you about some exciting things in the life of our church. Our teenagers are going to NYC, and I know that seems like a long way off. It's the summer of 2023, but we have to start raising funds to get them there a year in advance. So they're going to be working hard. They're going to be doing a car wash this coming Saturday. So if you need to dust off the car a little bit, don't run it through the car wash here in town. Bring it up by the church and let them squirt, squirt soap and water and wash it. And I don't know, they may get all the high spots off of it, but let everybody else know too. Come wash your car here at the church next Saturday. And next Sunday, we're launching our fall season of Connect Groups. And we're going to have a great time together. We've already booked some inflatable things for the kiddos to play on an obstacle course and a water slide for the little bitty ones. And, and I don't know, if you're a senior adult and you want to go through the obstacle course and race, find a buddy to go through, that's fine too. But we're going to have a great time with the kiddos, the little bitties. But we're cooking food for the whole church. We'll be grilling, cooking out. So you don't have to bring anything. We'll take it. Just bring your yourselves, and we're going to have an all-church picnic together next Sunday, right after the AM service, so you don't have to plan or cook or any of those things next Sunday morning. Right after church, we're going to have round tables, and please bring a bag chair. You'll need that. We'll have some tents, canopy tents, to have some shaded area because we're launching our new season of Connect Groups. Well, those tables over there to your right, my left, are filled with sign-up sheets. We've got seven groups already and possibly an eighth group that's going to be starting this year. So there's a place for you. So check out the group leader's name and sign up there on the sheet there. You can go in early bird, get your spot before they all fill up. We're going to connect with God and connect with each other. I'm convinced that God's going to do great things this year through our connect groups as we grow closer together. Hey, let's continue to worship God together today. You didn't come here, but for any other reason than to meet Jesus. And he's promised to be where two or three are gathered in his name. So would you stand with me this morning as we go to the Lord in prayer? Father in heaven, we thank you for this day that you've blessed us with, and we thank you for every opportunity that we have to walk through the doors of your house. And God, we already sense your spirit is here. You are good. You're faithful, and you promise to be with us. And Lord, would you speak to us today? Would you speak directly to our hearts and to our minds? And give us the courage this morning to be open to what you would say to us. And God, may we respond in a way that's pleasing to you. If you ask us to do something, maybe we'll be willing to do it. Lord, if you ask us to speak or to go or to stay or be quiet, Lord, whatever you ask us to do today, Lord, if there are things in our lives that we need to repent of and turn away from and, and follow you and obey you, give us courage today to listen to you above all things. Lord, as we sing songs of worship and praise to you today as a praise team leads us, Lord, give us a song in our heart to sing to you today to truly worship you and help us be participators in worship today. And Lord, we'll be careful for what you do in our lives. And we ask it all in your name. Amen. Hey, let's continue to worship Jesus this morning. Was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my tomb till I met you. I was breathing, but not. Failures I tried to hide. It was my tomb till I met you. You. Could 
one more time. I needed rescue. My sin was heavy, but chains break at the weight of your glory. What an incredible testimony this morning. And this can be all of our stories. If it's not yours today, it can be. I was telling the worship team this morning, I said, you know what, guys, we got to add a little punch to this song because we didn't just leisurely walk out of that grave, y'all. We ran out of that grave because he called our name. Let's declare this. Let's testify to this this morning. I needed rescue. I needed, I needed rescue. My sin was heavy. The chains break at the weight of your glory. I needed shelter. I was an orphan. Now you call me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were my healing. Now your love is the heaven. so good. We are so grateful to be in his house this morning. Let's just continue to sing about how good he is. Lift our praises.
pray that they will break in your holy name. God, I pray that sin will be no more. God, that lives will be surrendered, that our hearts will be your holy ground, not just when we worship on Sunday mornings, but God, may we remember what you've done for us throughout every moment of every day, throughout the week that others might know your transforming power. God, we thank you for what you're doing right here, right now. God, we know that you will continue to be faithful because it's just who you are. So God, I pray as Pastor Scott comes this morning, I pray that, that you will speak in and through him, God, and that our lives will be changed when we leave this place. And we'll give you the praise.
praise God. Sing a new song to the Lord. Do you have a song in your heart this morning? I'm not talking about what we just sang as the praise team led us, but do you have a song down deep in your heart to praise God with all that you have for all that he's done for you and all that he is? I I hope so because it's going to be hard when you leave this place. This is a, an easy place to worship God and to praise him, but tomorrow is not going to be Friday. Tomorrow is going to be Monday. And I think we wonder sometimes, how do we live for Christ and, and be all that God called us to be and live holy, righteous lives on Monday mornings? Why does no one say TGIM? It's always TGIF. Thank God it's Friday or Wednesday is hump day, but but Monday gets all the disrespect and and there's no love for Monday because, oh, it's Monday morning again. And all of those things that you've got to do that maybe you've, you've blocked out of your mind for a worship moment on Sunday, they come haunting us on Monday morning. So, so how do we live for Christ and live Christ-like lives on, on Monday mornings? And for the rest of the week, for that matter, well, I think Scripture helps us, and I want to share some things with you this morning. But, but first, I want to share a verse of Scripture with you from 2 Timothy chapter 2. And those of you that may know or you may not know, this is a letter, a second letter written by the Apostle Paul to young Timothy. Uh, Paul was Timothy's mentor or his example or leader, and, and, and Paul's pouring his life into young Timothy to live a life for Christ, to live a holy and a godly life. And, and so Timothy has offered himself to Paul and is allowing Paul to pour into him, to disciple him, to teach him. And you probably had it, heard it said many times, not me, but many other people say everybody needs a Paul pouring into their life and everybody needs a Timothy that they can pour their life into as a disciple and we need to be disciple makers and so that's what Timothy was uh, for Paul his disciple and Paul's pouring into him this letter this second letter that he's written to to Timothy but we got to look at this letter it was originally written to Timothy but it's also to every Christian everywhere because we're actually disciples down the line of Paul as ourselves today here in 2022 so we gain information we gain knowledge Knowledge and wisdom and help uh, for our everyday life from Scripture in 2 Timothy chapter 2. And if you'll look at verse 11 and 12, the Apostle Paul says, Here's a trustworthy saying. Here's something you can count on, something that you can trust and believe in. Paul says, if we died with him, certainly a reference to baptism. We understand when we go under the water, we're identifying with Christ's death and burial. We die to ourselves when we go under the water. But when we come up out of the water, we come up to new life and we identify with his new life. And so Paul said, if we died with him, we died to ourselves. we repented of our sins, we, we're turning from the ways of the world and we're following Christ, then we will also live with him. Because when Christ came up from the grave, we, we, some, we identify with the symbolism of baptism. We come up out of the water to new life. The old is gone. The old is dead. It, it's no longer who we are. We have a different identity. Our identity is in Christ and him alone. So if we died with him, we will also live with him, Paul says. In verse 12, if we endure, we will also reign with him. If we disown him, he will also disown us. There are a lot of ifs there, some conditions there. And and if we're going to make it to heaven, if we're going to live a holy and a godly life on this earth, if we're going to live with Christ for all eternity, we must live like Christ now. As we talked about in the book of Philippians, it was a colony of Rome. It was a little Rome in the culture and the rule of Rome was there. And, and, and Paul was making the example that we as Christians, as a church, we are, we are little bits and pieces of heaven. We are little Christ reflectors. We're the image of God. And if we're going to live with him for eternity in heaven and beyond heaven, we're going to have to live for Christ and live like Christ now. We're going to have to live holy and godly lives this is a kind of this is kind of like a, a dress rehearsal for the play or the drama or the musical. This is kind of like the dress rehearsal for eternity and heaven with Jesus and but it's a little different but similar. We got to rehearse and practice and become holy people that Jesus called us to be. 
I like to think about sports this time of year, and, and those of you that are sports-minded, you'll identify with it. Those of you who are not sports-minded, just, just bear with me. We'll get through this example as well. But, but games, you've heard it said, you've heard many coaches and, and ball players say that games are won, not necessarily on game day, they're won during the practice during the week or the days leading up to the actual ball game. They're actually won there, the preparation, the hard work the, that's put in the game planning, that's put in during practice. And you end up playing the way you practice. So if you half-heartedly practice, more than likely you're going to half-heartedly play the game. So that's why coaches are always saying you know, every rep matters, every practice matters, everything you do, you're practicing for the game. You've probably heard the phrase before, practice makes, that's why you practice, to make it more perfect and better so it's second nature in whatever sport or whatever thing it is. And it's easier to live for Christ on Sunday mornings than it is on Monday mornings and Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. For most folks, for most folks, some people are just mean all the time. They're mean on Sunday too. But for most folks, they come in on Sunday morning and we dress up and we wash behind the ears and brush our teeth and part our hair or do whatever it is, spray on some smell good and, put on, and we come and we sit and we worship and, and as the praise team leads, we, we participate because we're worshiping Jesus. But man, Monday has to come around and those Monday mornings are waiting on us and so how can we really live holy and godly lives, Christ-like lives throughout the week? How do we do that? Those Monday morning mountains that are facing us. Some would say those Monday morning monsters that are facing us. Pastor, you don't know who I have to work with when I get there Monday in the office. Or you don't have to, I know how I have to go to school with or I live with or any of those things. They're, they're waiting for us, those mountains, those whatever on Monday morning. Well, hey, can I do something real fun? I, I'm not a piano player. And I know the camera folks may have trouble following me or whatever. Just that'll be fine if you're at home. But uh, I didn't sleep at a Holiday Inn Express last night. But sometimes I come over here during the week and I just kind of peck out and peck around on the piano and pretend like I'm one of those wonderful keyboard players in our church. But I I've been able to find a few chords that will kind of go together and every once in a while figure something out. And there's something that's really fun. And I don't know if I can even do it on Sunday morning with all y'all looking at me. Y'all are scary people. You really are. But there's a couple couple of chords. Let me see if I can pick it out. And maybe you can recognize it. Maybe some of you that grew up in the 70s or the 80s. No, it sounds funny, but I just can't heal the pain. No, 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 no. Some of y'all are getting a little excited there, but somebody tell me who sang that song. Who, who, who sang that? Lionel Richie, all right, I'm not the only one in the crowd. And the song was called, Or Just Easy. Easy like Sunday morning. And you know the song, and it's one of those, y'all pray for pastor because he listened to that secular stuff growing up in the 70s, and that's why he behaves the way he does. But, but I always thought that was one of the most beautiful songs that I'd ever heard the first time I heard it. I had older brothers that listened to it and stuff, and I thought, man, that is, I, thought, I really thought it was a praise and worship song back in the, I thought it was a Christian song because it's easy like Sunday morning. But as I've gotten older, I've thought about, you know, it is easy to live for Jesus on Sunday, easy to live for Christ on Sunday morning. It don't take a lot of effort for us to, to, to be nice and kind and worship Jesus. Kind of easy like Sunday morning. And I'm not gifted enough to rewrite that song. I've flirted around with it and played around. When I'm here by myself and y'all aren't here, I will change the lyrics to that song. And I'll reword that easy like Sunday morning to, God, I'll praise you on Monday morning. I'll praise you. Whatever I have to face, whatever I have to go through, whatever I've been through, I'll praise you on Sunday morning. I want that to be my life song. I want that to be my testimony. When things don't always go well, 
And over the years, I heard someone say, you've been another, you've been a trip around the world another time. I think, uh, yeah, there, John Self said, you happy another trip around the world, around the sun by the earth. I don't know what that means. He, he knew what it meant, but had a birthday yesterday. So 51 years I've traveled around the sun. Don't think you're making very much progress, but you travel all the way around the sun. How many ever million miles that is? in 365 days. And in that, I, I've learned a few things to deal with Monday mornings and, and how to live the best we can to live godly and holy lives. And I want to share those with you this morning. And the first one that, that helps me, and I don't know, maybe it'll help you, is there are just times we got to pray for power. And I believe it always begins there with praying for the power of the Holy Spirit. Because there are times, if I'm honest, you may want to pull my man card, but I just don't have the power to face Monday. I just don't, and I need a power from above. I need the power from above. I need God to help me, the power of the Holy Spirit. This is the first and the most important thing that I could tell you is to pray for power because without power of the Holy Spirit, we're no match for Monday. We're no match for Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, or even when it's easy on Sunday morning. And it's coming. Monday's coming, ready or not. Ready or not. Here I come. And if we don't pray for God's Holy Spirit, his power, we're no match for Satan and his temptations on Mondays. In Acts chapter 1, verse 8, Jesus is sharing with his disciples, his followers, some of the last things that he even said before he was ascended to the right hand of God the Father. In verse 8, Jesus said, but you will receive power. When? When the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And so many people think, boy, I got the power. Boy, I can do all kind of incredible things, and I can leap tall buildings and faster than a speeding bullet and all of those things. That's not what Jesus was saying. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. When you open your life up and say, Lord, I'm tired of living under my pure, my power and my strength. I need your power and strength. Would you forgive me of all my sins? Would you cleanse all the junk that's unholy and ungodly? Fill me with your love and your power. That's what I need. And that power was to be his witnesses. And sometimes you're loud like I am. And sometimes your personality is quiet. But you can still receive the power of the Holy Spirit to be his witnesses right here in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the world. Jesus knew his disciples were going to face a lot of Monday mornings. They were going to face persecution, imprisonment. They were going to even face death for being Christians. He knew they would face those days when they felt like giving up and, and quitting. And they would need the power of the living God living inside of them to face those moments and remain faithful and true. So I got to tell you, before you leave here, you need to pray for God's power in your life to be a witness before those who are watching. Before you face the day, you need his power working through you. And, and James James chapter 5, verse 16, we read it a lot of times when we anoint people and ask for, for God's healing, that God would touch people physically, emotionally, mentally, and, and even spiritually. We'll, we'll read this scripture from James chapter 5, verse 16, and we'll say, therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. And we emphasize that, but if we go on and read the rest of that verse in 16, James says, the prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. A righteous person, one who is living in a right relationship with Jesus, who's repented of their sins, who's allowed the Holy Spirit to come and cleanse all unrighteousness, is powerful and effective because there's nothing hindering their prayers with God the Father. I've gotten rid of all that, that, that stuff. We need to be sourced by God's Holy Spirit, God's power. Not my power, not my strength, but God's power needs to be our source for daily living. A few years ago, we loaded up and moved to a 
town a little west of here, northwest, in Sheffield, Alabama. Or if you're from Sheffield, it's Sherfield. It has a lot of R's in there. I don't know just the way they pronounce it, but we learned to pronounce Sheffield, Sherfield. When we were there, wonderful time. They're wonderful people. There was a guy in my church there uh, named Ricky Bates. And Ricky was a, a garage door installer. That's what he did for a living. Had a great living there. And, and he lived in it. And I had a problem with our garage door at the parsonage. And I'd hit the little button, you know, in your hand or above your visor. And even on the wall, and the door wouldn't go up. So I'd have to go pull the lever and raise the door by myself. And it just wouldn't work. And I thought, well, it's probably getting old and I'll, I'll call Ricky. And so I called Ricky. I said, Hey, would you mind when you get a chance in your schedule? Just, you know, no hurry, but come check out my garage door. It won't work. I guess some motors burn up or something's wrong with the short and the wire or whatever. I can't get it to work. And so uh, Ricky comes over to the house, to the parsonage there. And, uh, he's listening to me tell what's wrong with it. And a little clicker won't work. I've changed the batteries out in it. Nothing. The garage door won't come up. There's no power. I have to pick it up myself. And so he looks up at the motor and he looks at a few things and walks over, walks over to the wall and flips a switch and mashes a little button there and it doesn't work. And so he just kind of follows the ceiling and he looks around and he says, I think I know. So he goes back to his truck and he gets a ladder and he climbs up on the ladder and he follows the little cord coming from the, the motor there and plugs it in the outlet. I had a front row seat. I got to watch the power of my garage door opener, man. It, it raised up and it went down. And, and I sat there and played with it a few times. I thought, man, that's pretty cool. There's power when it's plugged in. And I got to tell you, some of the simplest things to me speak to me. I mean, I, you know, there are all these philosophies and great thoughts and, and think tanks and stuff. But I need, I need somebody to funnel it down, just, just simple, just simplify it to me. And in that moment, God spoke to me so many years ago and said, if you're not plugged into the power source, it won't work, dummy. And he said, when you're not plugged into me, life just doesn't work Right? It's hard to cope with the problems and the stuff that you're going to deal with. Those Monday mornings are coming, but if you're not plugged into me, you're not going to be able to cope with it and deal with it. So before you start the day, you need to pray for the power of the Holy Spirit. We need to get plugged in. We need to get connected to the source. We need to get connected to God and connected with each other. A little plug there, a little shameless plug for connect groups. You need to get plugged in. That's where the power source is that, that sources our life for holy living. And we too often live beneath our privilege as Christians because we know where the power source is. It's not that we're better than anybody. We're not. We just know the, the way, the truth, and the life. We know where to get plugged in for life. It's Jesus. Well, the, the second thing I want you to know, just making those trips around the sun for 51 years, is that we got to pay the price. We got to make some sacrifices in our lives. You see, Jesus was the ultimate example, and he died on the cross. He gave up himself. He gave his life on the cross for the sins of the world. And paying the price on our part means we have to be committed to Christ. We have to sacrifice our, our life and give our life to Jesus. So many times we think about salvation and holy living as we'll just add a little Jesus to our life. I, I, I receive Jesus into my life. As if Jesus is, is standing there and saying, hey, I want to get into the little holy club of your life there, but you won't let me in. No, no, no. We, we need to receive him in our lives, but we need to give him our lives in return and say, Lord, I sacrifice my life, your will, your way. I'm going to follow you, Jesus. We, we need to pay the price and sacrifice our life, our agenda, our life, and, and follow Jesus. We have to be committed to Christ and his mission 100%. All in. Whatever cliche you want to use, Jesus will take nothing less than our very best. The best of our talents, our abilities, our efforts, our minds, our resources. Nothing but the best for Jesus 
In Luke chapter 9, verse 23, then, then Jesus speaks to his disciples, to all of them. He says, if anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up the cross, take up his cross daily and follow me. It's not a once saved, always saved kind of deal. I know that's popular theology this day, but it's not a one and done it's not once saved, always saved. And can I say to Nazarenes and holiness believers, it's not a once saved, once saved, always saved. And it's not a once sanctified, always sanctified. Jesus said, pick up your cross daily and follow me. It's an everyday decision, an everyday commitment, an everyday sacrifice. I'm going to pay the price. I'm going to follow Jesus because his plan's better anyway. In Romans chapter 6, the Apostle Paul writing to the church in verse 1, Paul says, what shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning that grace may increase? He was talking about the, the extravagant, abundant grace of Jesus that covers all of our sins. And so Paul said, what should we say then since grace is abundant and extravagant and all these things? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? I'll just keep on sinning more and and God will pour more grace. The more I sin, the more grace I get. Paul's saying, by no means, because we died to sin, how can we live in it any longer? Or don't you know that, that all of us were baptized into Christ Jesus? We're baptized into his death. We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. We don't stay dead. We're resurrected to new life. And dabbling one foot in the world and one foot in the church won't get it on Monday mornings. We got to be all in. Later on, the Apostle Paul writes in his letter to the Corinthian church, his first letter, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 31. Paul simply says, I die every day. Some of your translations will say, I die daily. Paul said, I mean that, brothers, just as surely as I glory over you in Christ Jesus, our Lord. It's a daily decision. Not my will, but your will, Father. Not my agenda, not my plans, not my motives, not my schemes, not my hopes, not my dreams, but yours, Lord. I surrender because yours is better than any plan I could conceive. We must die. Die to ourself. And when we die to ourself, it results in holy living. We die to our selfishness, our self-centeredness, and allow God to have his way in our lives completely. Yes, Lord, yes. He's just saying a little chorus when I was a teenager. Yes, Lord, yes. To your will and to your will. The old hymn says, have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Thou art the potter, I'm the clay. So many times we want to be the potter of our lives and shape our own lives when we need to yield and say, Lord, I'm just the clay. You shape and mold and make me what you want me to be. A famous man once said, you can pay the price now and you can play later. Or you can play around right now, but you're going to pay the price later. I used to hear that about my grades about job, work ethic, about living for the Lord. You can pay the price now and and play later. Or you can play around, goof around, and do what everybody else is doing now, but you're going to pay for it later. Same way in our spiritual journey and walk. We can sacrifice now and say, Lord, yes, Lord, to your will, to your way, and enjoy eternity with Jesus forever. Or we can goof around and play around with our lives and hey, you only live once. Live it up. When in Rome, live like the Romans. And then miss eternity. And pay for all eternity later. Pay the price now. Monday's coming. Third thing I want to share with you, these are simple thoughts. Press on. 
just press on when you don't want to press on. You feel like giving up. You feel like quitting. Press on. In other words, keep on keeping on. In Philippians, we read just a couple of weeks ago, chapter 3, verse 12. Paul says, not that I've already attained all of this or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind me, forgetting what is behind me, forgetting what is behind me, and straining toward what's ahead. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. I press on. I press on. When Monday morning comes, when the alarm clock goes off and I got to face those things, I press on. I just keep on keeping on. Whatever the trouble, whatever I face, I keep on. I strain toward the prize which is ahead. Christ Jesus took hold of me. I want to press towards that goal of eternal life with Jesus. So I keep on, keep it on. Former general superintendent in the Church of the Nazarene, Dr. Cunningham, one of my personal favorites. Dr. Cunningham was on a trip in Africa, and he he ran across a, a young African girl who was 10 years old. And he tells the story that this young African girl, it was her job to get water for her family. That was her job. That was her chore for the family was to get water. The the only trouble is it was two miles away for the 10-year-old little girl to go get water for the family. Life-sustaining water. So she walked with a bucket full of water on top of her head. You may have seen people do that before. It was a rusted bucket, and it had a hole in the bottom of the bucket that leaked water. And so the little girl carried in one hand the bucket on top of her head, and and in the other hand she carried a paper cup underneath the leak catching the water. And every so often she would dump it back in the bucket and catch the water that had leaked out and put it back in the bucket. For two miles She would fill the bucket back up and walk to bring water to her family. Life-giving water. She could complain. Dr. Cunningham said she could complain, but she didn't. It was a joy and it was a privilege for her to carry the the life-giving water that her family needed. She could complain and said it's an old rusty bucket and it leaks and I'll never make it back, but she kept on. She pressed on with a paper cup. She pressed on for two miles, 10-year-old girl with a water bucket for her family. Can I ask you a question this morning? Do you carry the water of life for your family? To those around you, are you carrying the water of life, the the life-giving water that can only come from Christ Jesus? Jesus said, if you drink of this water, you'll never thirst again. And as Christians, as Christ followers, even on Monday mornings, we carry the life-giving water that the world needs, that our family needs. Are, Are you carrying the water to your family? If you are, then press on. Keep on, keep it on. Keep pressing on toward heaven, toward eternal life, because your family's counting on you. Your friends are counting on you. Your coworkers are counting on you. Your classmates, your, your teammates are counting on you because you're the one who has the water. You're the one who has the life giving water that changes everything. Press on. I know Monday's coming, but press on. Well, the fourth thing I want you to know this morning to help you live a holy and godly life is just praise him. 
Praise him. Come what may on Monday mornings or any other day, praise him. Praise him anyway. In Psalm chapter 100, verse 4, it says, Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Did you enter into the doors this morning with a grateful heart, with thanksgiving? Did you have a song in your heart to praise him? Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Were you praising him this morning? In here, will you praise him with your life on Monday? Give thanks to him and praise his name. Somebody has something to praise the Lord for today. Somebody ought to praise God today. I mean, somebody ought to realize that, that God, the creator of the universe, loves them. And died for them. I mean, come on. There, there ought to be something we can praise God for. In our Kernet groups, we talk about what can you praise God for this week? You ought to hear our praises. You know, the world takes his name in vain. It amazes me. It's still the only name that you can criticize or curse or put down of any person on the earth and still be acceptable in our culture. His name the world takes it in vain and uses it flippantly. But we should be the ones to lift up his name and make his name holy and righteous and good by praising his holy name. If we're going to live holy and godly lives on Monday, Psalm 96, the little video that we watched between the worship and message today says, it's Psalm 96, 1 and 2, sing to the Lord a new song, sing to the Lord all the earth, sing to the Lord, praise his name, proclaim his salvation day after day, praise God every day for who he is, for what he's done, praise him anyway. Praise God for life, for another opportunity to live for him, to worship him, to gather in this place with God's children to praise him. Praise him for our life. Praise him for our breath, another heartbeat. Our life should be a song of praise. Our life should be a song of praise. Whether our lips are moving or not, our life should sing a song of praise to God. Many years ago, there's a, a group named Cast and Crown. Some of you may have heard that little small time band from Georgia. They've had a song or two, I think you may have heard of. They're still working on it. They'll get good one day, but. One of their songs that I really love the lyrics to is, the title of it is Life Song. And if you're familiar with it, if you're not, it, these are the lyrics, some of the lyrics, I'm not going to read the whole song, but some of the lyrics say, empty hands held high, such small sacrifice, but if not joined with my life, I sing in vain tonight. May the words I say, may the things I do Make my life song bring a smile to you. Let my life song sing to you. Let my life song sing to you. I want to sign your name to the end of this day. Knowing that my heart was true, let my life song sing to you. It goes on to say, Lord, I, I give my life a living sacrifice to reach a world in need to be your hands and your feet. So may the words I say and the things I do make my life song sing, bring a smile to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let my life song sing to you. What a beautiful testimony. If our lives were songs, what would your life be singing to the world around us? But when you leave here on Sunday, where it's easy, 
What is your life going to sing on Monday morning to those who know you best, to those around you? Does your live song sing a song of praise to God and, and point people to God? Or does it bring a smile to God's face, the song, you know, down deep in your heart? I know we all have bad moments, those snapshots of life. But the overarching banner of your life, what is it singing? Today, no doubt some folks walked in, I know, discouraged, defeated, powerless. You know it and God knows it. You need to pray this morning at the altar. You need to pray for God's power in your life. You seem disconnected from the source of the living God and his power. Some of you may need to pay the price. Sacrifice your life for Jesus because he sacrificed his life for you. Some of you, the words of God today are saying, press on. Keep on keeping on. Keep trusting God because you have the life giving water for those around you. Some of you have lost your praise and you just need to praise God for his goodness. Maybe you've forgotten how good he's been. Like never before with your life, your, your lifestyle of worship as you walk and move about. You have plenty of prayer requests. Let me say, please write on those cards. I love getting your prayer request. I got three last week and I'm praying about those things. But sometimes we get a little top heavy with prayer requests and forget to praise God, the one we're praying to, to answer our prayers anyway. Just praise him. Share those as well. Maybe this morning, some of you'd like to come and pray. And maybe you'd like to pray about some things. Because you know your Monday morning better than I know your Monday morning. You know what you're facing. You know the things that you deal with. And you just need to talk to God about those things. You need God to help you. And you'd like to just come and pray this morning at the altar. Would you stand with me this morning? Would you stand with me? So we have an invitation number. Pastor, I'd like to come and pray this morning. It's okay to come and pray. Pastor, I just need some power. I feel a little disconnected. I need the power of God to be a witness for those around me. Pastor, I need to I need to pay the price. Some things in my life I just need to surrender. I just need to surrender some things. If I'm honest, sometimes I just need to press on. There's some discouragement, and I feel like giving up sometimes, and I just need God's comforting Holy Spirit to help me press on, to keep on keeping on. And I just need to talk to Jesus this morning about that so I can praise him, so my life song sings to him. Anyone else like to come and pray this morning? This invitation is for you. Would you come? Pastor, I just need to talk to God this morning. Pastor, I didn't come this morning to the altar, but in my heart I know I need your prayers this week. I just wish you'd remember me this week as I face a new week in Monday morning. If that's you, would you just slip your hand up with no one looking around and your head's bowed? Pastor, pray for me this week. I have a need. 
Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Pastor, just pray for me this week. Thank you. Would you join with me in prayer this morning? Father, we thank you for this day. And God, we thank you for another opportunity to worship you in your house with your people. Lord, thank you for those that are watching online at home. We, we don't know where they are, what they're going through, what they're facing, but God, you do. And you can meet their need as well. Lord, every hand that's raised, every person kneeling at the altar this morning, God, you know their need, their deepest desire in their heart and their life. And God, we know that, that they can surrender it all to you, Father, and you can meet that need today. We can claim victory today in our hearts and in our minds because of what you've done in our life today. God, we need your courage. We need your strength because we know Satan is waiting. Just as we leave this place, as we walk out of these doors, Satan tries to steal, kill, and destroy everything that God's accomplished. But we know that you're more powerful and you're stronger. Help us to be aware, Lord. Help us to be sober-minded to the enemy's attacks in our lives. And help us to trust you. Help us to be faithful to you, God. And may when we leave this place, people see and hear that life song in our heart and life and be drawn to you, God. May we be a witness wherever we go and all the conversations that we have, God, of your grace and your mercy, your forgiveness and your healing. God, we ask it all. And you're strong. In your powerful name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. May God bless you as you leave today. Tell somebody beside you or near you that it's good to see them in church. Good to see them in God's house. Tell them you love them. I mean, go out on a limb and say, you know what? I love you. Because of Jesus, I love you. Y'all have a great week and y'all hang in there. You may be dismissed. Amen.